Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm telling you about that, that thing about the prediction score because this is related to the algorithm aggressiveness. So, for example, if the cut is on prediction score equals 70%, the aggressiveness is 30%. And yeah, this threshold for making humans evolve as CB or not CB is, uh, is also associated, for example, with the evaluation score. So, if we go here to the analysis, uh, notice that, I mean, the risk score is also 8001, but the evaluation score you can have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So what happens is that, yeah, go on. Ah, sorry. Sorry, I forgot to share. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, are you seeing now? So this, as I was saying, this algorithm aggressiveness is associated with the prediction score. And the other one, which is the threshold for marking humans about a CB or not CB, 90%, is associated with this evaluation score. And this is, so good, is interesting because, let's say, it allows to contextualize of why we need to pick those numbers. Because we need to, we need to decide what's the threshold of who we want to flag or not. So this figure here, it could be an interesting thing to put on the report or not. It, it really depends. For example, on, on JR12, we did put here. And yeah. Moving forward, there are, there are some fix here about doing some correlation maps, but we didn't use those on the report. And the last part here is really, let's say, um, a number generator. So the idea here is that I did several logical operations and metrics here, really to get statistics like, for example, how much users were evaluated by the humans, how much were marked as true, how much was marked as false, same thing for the risk, same thing for the algorithms, same thing for our users. So, I mean, this set of prints, they are the guys that it's going to provide us the numbers so that, for example, we put numbers for all the scenarios here. So, that's one thing about this report, because this report is really about, let's say, generating a numerical overview of what did happen through the hound. And to be fair, most of those numbers here, I just did co copy here and did paste on the hack MD. I think it will become about, a bit more clear when we produce this. There is also this one about CB impact. So this one here, we did take the contributions and we did some analysis on the contributions uh, data set. So we have things like, for example, uh, how much contributions we had, how much contributions we did remove by flagging, uh, how much were matched, how much contributors, the, the sum of the contributions in SDT. For, so for example, on this case here, or, originally we had on JR12 uh, about 5 million USDT in contributions. And there were 600,000 uh, USDT that was removed not that it was removed, but let's say that, that amount in dollars was not being matched to the pool. And also some, some statistics like, for example, uh, what's the, the median contribution for the user when we have the original scenario and what happens on the removal scenario. So the way of parse is the following. The original one is what happens if we take the entire contribution data set. The modified one is the original contribution data set minus the contributions from the CBO users. And the removal data set is that data set only with the CBO users. So for example, we can see here that the contributions of the CBO users tend to be a bit less than the original ones. But of course, this, given that let's say we have two millions here, it sort of gets, I mean, you sort of smooth a lot of noise here. Why? Uh, so, for example, yeah, so this is because of aggregation, because we are aggregating two times. Uh, so let me remember here, because what, what we are doing here is the following. Uh, we take one user. Uh, we take the median contribution of the user. So what did happen is that we did transform the contributions that uh, dimension into a user dimension. 
And then we take the medium over the user data set. Uh, so what happens is that when you do that, uh, yeah, you tend to have those round numbers here. Uh, but, but yeah, for example, if you use the mean, it, it does not get rounded. Uh, but yeah, so more histograms here, but I do not think that these, those histograms are particularly insightful. So yeah, uh, this notebook provides a lot of numbers that we can use for filling that report. So yeah, and if you go back here to the report, the, the idea is really that, uh, I mean, we provide a summary, we provide what's the incidence, uh, we want also to compare the incidence with how much flag uh, users has been flagged. So for example, we did estimate the incidence as 26.3%. And the proportion of flag users was 27.9%. So it, they are sort of the same order in this case. Uh, but there is a tricky part that, for example, this is not the case for 13, but it was the case for 12, that they did have a lot of squelch, so actually the human evaluation was only associated with this one. So, um, yeah. Um, in any case, my goal here was just to give you a quick overview about, let's say, a very quick glance of on what we did uh, do before. But I think that the most productive thing would be really now to be, let's say, step by step and simply do everything again for 13. Yes. Yes, Squelch is when, yes. Um, essentially, it's the exclusion of the user from the matching pool. Uh, so, so you can understand Squelch and Flag as somewhat synonymous. Uh, it's one of the, yeah, just that it is uh, synonymous, maybe. So the context of that is that, let's say, on this particular case, we did introduce a lot of, uh, let's say, manual squelches because, let me see how I can explain easily. So the idea is that we did have, a, uh, let's say, we did have, let's say, a previous list of, let's say, 800 users, something like that, that we did already know that. So it was sort of uh, peculiar because it was those users did. Yeah, uh, let's uh, let's ignore it because maybe this is going to confuse more than helps. So in any case, for thirteen, we are not going to use that. So so let's do the following. Uh, going back here to the documentation, uh, we have a step by step. So we need to download the files, create a folder. I factor the notebook so that we have the new numbers. And given the new numbers, we show the duplicates that hacking the report and just paste the new numbers so that so that we can take any conclusions. So let's start by downloading the files. So this is probably something that you are going to need access to. Uh, I'm going to do on my own. If you do not have access, I can send a zipped file to you afterwards so that you can reproduce in your own. But the idea is that we do have a project here that is created uh, on the start of the round. We do have a cloud storage uh, bucket. And, and all the intermediate outputs is going to be generated on one of them, like for example, the Arman JR13. And the idea is that we should get the latest CSV output, the latest human flags, and the latest hand data. And there is also the catch that as we download uh, those files, uh, it's important to keep track of the timestamp because this allows to have provenance. So what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to go on the folder here. I copy the, the timestamp. I go inside here and I download, download. And save as. And as I save, uh, yeah, it actually did hard here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply call this guy here, CSV output dash timestamp dot CSV. And I save it. And I'm going here to go to VS Code. Oops, where did it? And I am, I'm going to go here on private data. And there is the fo this folder here, JR13 report. And I'm going to simply move it here. And 
And I'm also going to compress because I mean, if you need to share it, it makes life a bit easier. And we need to do the same thing for the other two files. So let's go there. So the next one is going to be human flags. I'm going to get the latest one. I'm going to download it. Save as human flags dash timestamp dot json. And I'm moving here inside, compress, and move refresh. Uh, I'm almost sure that this is something that could be automated, but we didn't have the development time for, to do that. And the next one is home data. So we get the latest one, uh, copy here the timestamp. Actually, let me copy directly. Download um, data dash timestamp dot hdf five. Actually, there was a space here and compress. Okay, so now we have the data. Now, what we need to do is to essentially copy the latest report. And just uh, just change the file names. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take here GR12 report. I'm going to copy and paste. Yeah, and yeah, VS Code sometimes it's very neat because it ha already has renamed to GR13 here. Okay, and that's it. Now, first thing is let's change that to git congruence 13 CBU report. I also need to select the right kernel so that I do not hit uh, errors. And I need to change the file name. So I go here to private data. First one is the SSV output. So copy relative path. And I paste here, done. Okay. The second one is the, is the home data. So copy relative path, change here on the path, and hmm, that's weird. Yeah, it seems we hit a bug here. So let me see one thing. Weird. Well, I will have to, to investigate that. Uh, while I do not uh, know what this has happened, I'm going to use simply the JR12 here. Okay, I'm using simply the 12 here, and let's go to the human flex. And same thing, I copy and Okay, so now that ha we have a, I mean, that's how we need to change to report a priori. And then what we do is simply restart and run, uh, and run everyone. Uh, keep in mind that let's say we did have, did to, did to do this hack that the home data were used for 12 because of this bug. I did it to investigate that, but I do not want to consume too much the time. I think that showing the flow is more important. So I'm running everyone here, so let me see where we are. 
on everyone. Yeah, so I think we finished uh, running. So for example, first thing is that we have an incidence about, of about 16.4%. Uh, uh, let me see one. I think we'll do one sense check here. Ah, I, I got a, I put a typo here. So the human flag is here. I, for accident, I put the for, from 12 hundred and ten thing. Uh, I noticed that because when I sent the CB analysis, the date here is from last year. So sometimes plots they are useful because if you see the date, you already send the check. So running again. Now you can see that it's right. So the CB incidence on this round is 14%. So the CB incidence on this round is lower than the previous one. Uh, notice that, let's say, it was generally constant, but there was this uh, round in evaluation here that it was a bit higher than the others. I wouldn't say that, I mean, I, I mean, it's interesting, but it's a bit hard to say that, statistically speaking, that, let's say, it's off the charts. And there was a curious result that, just like before uh, the last round, we did have a higher instance at the beginning rather than the end. So this is an interesting hypothesis that we could work that, let's say, for maybe CBUs, they tend to be more active on the start of the round. But yeah, we have this number. We also have the distribution here, for example, for the evaluation scores. So sort like that before. The prediction score is also... Notice that the prediction score here is very biased towards the zero. So it, it seems that the machine learning algorithm got the got a, little, a bit less confident than before, but I mean, we will need to do a deep investigation to get more details. And here we have, I mean, all the metrics, like for example, how much users has been evaluated and so on. So after this is done, the right thing to do is to save the file, uh, do a push. And that's it. So we have our reference uh, numbers here so that we can put on the doc. And then we can, what we can do now is to, let's say, is to duplicate this file here and replace the numbers so that we have something for JAR13. Uh, so the way that I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to go to edit mode here. I'm going to copy everything. I'm going to go to this document here, create a new note and paste here, change to 13. And by the way, I'm going to make that a uh, publicity so that everyone can edit it. I'm going to send you on, on the chat where it's, where is the message here? Yeah. So there is a problem that I'm not seeing the, ah, okay, so. Yeah, I send you the link and share the screen again. So, all right. So when doing the feeling, it's a good idea to first uh, the summary, unless we have a good reason. It's a good idea to, let's say, put that as a, a comment. I, I mean, ideally the summary, we should always, uh, let's say, do a custom uh, description so that we do not recycle across rounds. So let me see how I could comment that out. I think it's... Okay, so I did comment out the summary because ideally we should always write a new summary. On the links, we should update so that we also put a link here for the, for the last round report. So I put here. And what we can do here is really, let's say, put some flags, like, for example, to do. So what I'm going to do is the following. Uh, on every number that I have on this report, I'm going to put to do, so that we, we force ourselves to update given the new notebook. So to do, 
And by the way, actually, we do not need these scenarios. That was very specific to round 12. So to do, to do, to do, to do. This is, as I said before, it's just to make sure that we do not uh, mix numbers with the previous rounds. So it's uh, always a good practice. Okay, so now our goal is really to fill out the to do's here with the things that we have on the notebook. So let's start here. So the algorithm aggressiveness isn't the threshold for human vows. It's not on the notebook because you need to ask questions. So I'm going to simply put here what we did use. And now next uh, thing is really to put the estimated CB incidence per evaluation rounds. So what we are going to do here, I'm going to put my notebook here on my side and the hack media on the other side. Let me see if I can put on the head here. Okay. So first thing, the estimated CB incidence per evaluation rounds. So what I'm going to do here is to Save this file. And I'm going to copy here. Copy. Okay, no, it didn't work. I guess I simply need to. Well, where it is. Ah, it has saved it here on the notebooks. Unless uh, not the load, unless uh, new plot. Okay. Yeah, for some reason it seems that it's not uh, uploading. Well, I will skip it for now. So let's for the next one. Estimated CB instance plus minus. So okay. So this one is fourteen point one percent, and there is the confidence interval here. So I must plus and yeah. I think that we can simply copy as it is, and we say it's not ninety percent is CI. And then we need the estimated CPU users. So in order to get that, we need to get the total number of users. So it was the total number of evaluated users here. And we should do the math. So 743 and multiplied by 0.
I think we could add a not, uh, Jupyter notebook for that. And this multiplied by 0, 0,41 minus 0, 3. Oops. And we take also plus. Okay. So yeah, we have our first sec section here done, which is the CB instance. And they're interested flagged users fraction. So that's essentially the users marked as true here. So this is going to be 11.9%. And this is going to be uh, 2071. And civil flags. So this is really statistics from here about how much flags we have from risks, how much from heuristics, from how much for, from uh, humans, and so on. We do not need the scratch things. So for machine learning, it would be it would be five fifty three. For heuristics, it would be ten ten thousand seventy seven sixty seven. For humans, it would be 951. And total number of flags is uh, 2071. And then we have here CB evaluation. So, yeah, let's just copy that. Now, the second one, which is summary statistics on scenarios. So again, it's really about just copy and pasting. Okay, now we have the to-dos on the graph. So let me see. So this is the histogram per contribu of contribution per user aggregate. So it would be, it would be this one. Let me see if I can upload it now. Ah, now it worked. It so this is done. Now we need this heat map here. And by the way, keep in mind that, let, let's say, this is what was done for uh, 12, but uh, if there are things that are more relevant or new plots or new metrics, we should be definitely open for putting more. This is just a baseline that uh, we can use as a departure point. So now upload this one. Now I need to upload this one here. Yeah, it's for some reason it's the histograms that uh, Hackmedia doesn't want. So let's put as a, that as to do. I'll see why why that is happening. Let me see if I at least can upload this other one. Yeah, that one worked. Now another thing that we need is the CBU report on GR12.
also here now. And the latest missing piece here is to write the summary. So let's zoom in here and write something. So as I said, let's use that as a reference point because So for 13, let's let's post that something like, for example, um Chocho of total of Kitihon uses was flagged. So that was about yeah of the Gitcoin users representing a certain amount of contributions. So that amount of contributions here is the total um, total contributions removed divided by the original. So it would be actually let me to get simply get a calculator. At this calculator, I can't type. Divided by two, three, four, two, four, eight. Six dot two percent of the contributions. Were flagged during a, a thirteen. The CBO incidence during this round is significantly lower than rounds 12, with an estimate of being... So the previous round was, let me check here the past report. The previous round was 16.4%. And this one was 11.9, so 6.4.9. At least, of it was. Another interesting thing to put here is about the fact that, let's say, the flagged user's fraction is below the instance. So specifically, the flagged user's fraction is it's 84%. So yeah, the flagging efficiency was, was 84%. So what this means that, let's say, given that we have less flags than the estimate of the instance, it means that we are letting some CBOs uh, uh, go. So yeah. Well, I think that that's sort of it. I, we would still need to compute also the lower and upper boundaries here. And so, yeah, means that probably the SAD is under flagging compared to what is expected. I told, uh, it is still compatible with the hypothesis of we catching out the CPUs. Now let me put here lower boundary and upper boundary. So the upper boundary is really, we must take this uh, instance estimate and take into account the fact that uh, so, so 
for example, what we, the way that we will do is the following. We take 11.9 and divide it by, for example, let me see, 14 is, let's change that. So the upper boundary is actually 93%. So I need to change the conclusion because it's not compatible with the hypothesis of 100%. And there is the water one, which is plus. So 99 and 54, 77%. That compared to what humans would do. So I think I think that's it. Where just keep in mind that let's say uh, this is one thing that let's say I need to look into, but. Let's say that would be the basic flow. And let's say, uh, yeah, if we did it here, stubborn into that bug, I would say that let's say we would be done. We would simply send this HackMD and it's, that was it. Yeah, so sorry for the problem the issue that we had. So no we're recording locally here. So I mean, just to make clear, we are recording. So going back, uh, uh, I'm going to share my screen here so that we do a quick uh, walkthrough on the, on the heap. So OK, what we are seeing here is my VS code. So it's open on, on the current commit of the CBU detection uh, reports uh, heap. And you can see that we have three folders here, docs, private data, and data. So the distinction here is that the private data, there is a line here so that we do not do automatic push. So mm -hmm. anything that we do not want to, to be on the public eye, we, we, we should put it there. Like, for example, yeah. anything that relates to personal identity and so on. If it's OK, you can put on the data, no problem. And another folder here that we have is docs. So on docs, I did put here some uh, instructions on a high level. So it's really about download the files, uh, create a folder on the private data folder with those files, uh, rename things, duplicate the report and refactor, and summarize findings on document. And we are going to, going to go over them shortly. But on notebooks here, we have a TGR 12 report notebook, which is going to be the base analysis. I'm going to walk through it uh, shortly. Just before that, I'm going to show the private uh, data folder. So we have a folder here, JR 12 report, and it contains three files, the HAM data, the human flags, and the CSV output. The HAM data is essentially the data, it's the data that, let's say, generates the features that we have. So it's the most granular level of data that we have in regards of the contributions and so on. And it's the most sensitive part of, uh, of these private files is really the home data. So the human flags, they are the data that come out of the human evaluation process. So are you aware about how it works uh, or not? I am kind of vaguely aware, yeah. Yeah, I've got, I've got a high level understanding. Yeah, so the best way of understanding is we do have a Google spreadsheet and people, they, they use that for essentially doing maps between Gitcoin users and if it's CB or not and if, it, if they have confidence or not. So it's just like a survey. It, it's a CBU mm -hmm. survey. And the, this file is going to be important on the analysis because it allows us to have an estimate of the statistical instance of, of CBNIS. But, but it's a tabular data set. And the CSV, the CSV output, it's really the final result set. So they are all zipped, so you could open and, I mean, could they could and open. But as we do the, go through the notebook, I think it's going to be a bit more clear. And 
that's sort of it. Uh, I think that we can go now to JR12 uh, report notebook here and have a quick walkthrough because we are going to clone that and I mean. So, okay. So, yeah, so just go over here. So, the first hell cell here we he really have, let's say, the user imports when doing any kind of numeric analysis. Uh, one important method that I did put here is open largest file in zip, which is coming from this u2.py here. Uh, the reason why we have this function is that, as you did notice, all the files here are compressed. Uh, this can be important when working with GitHub repos because those files they can be easily more than 50 megabytes, 100 megabytes, and uh, I mean, it can really degrade the performance on a, on a Git repo tree. So, we are going to see this pattern that all data files that we load, we are always going to use that. And first thing that we do on this preparation step is really loading results. So, we have a path here, for example, for the final uh, results, which is this is a SV output, and I'm calling here the aggregate result. So I open the file. The second argument is, let's say, it's a callback function. So I open the zip and then it triggers head CSV sequence. Nevertheless, I, I, the thing that we are really interested in is that, is, to the, is that. When we pass that, we, we load the pandas data frame, and it has, and let me open actually five homes here so that we can see. Yeah, essentially what we have here is that a list of handles and according to each user you have, for example, the aggregate score. The aggregate score is the, you can interpret that as the squelch. So if it's one, the user has been squelched. If it's zero, it has been not squelched. So this is going to be our ground truth about if the user has been uh, flagged or not. But we also have other numbers like the prediction score, the evaluation score, and the heuristic score. And they do have a more nice interpretation. Let me see if I can get some. Yeah, so it's all none. So as you can see from here, the evaluation score and heuristic score tends to be a bit more hard. The reason being is because the prediction score is simply what the machine learning algorithm thinks how CBR user is. So you are always going to have a number. The evaluation score and the heuristic score, the evaluation score, they come from the human evaluations. So essentially, they are the results from the survey. So typically speaking, the evaluations, they tend to get five to 10% of the users because we are manually evaluating them. And it's a number between a zero and one. And the risk score is, is based on some criteria, like for example, I mean, we use some pretty obvious markers to get to know if the user is legit or not. And also it's a number between a zero and one. And the thing is that the final score about if the user is CB or not, which is the aggregate score, is really, let's say, a hurdle that we apply on those three here. So the idea is the following. If you have an um, evaluation, uh, the aggregate score is going to give preference to the evaluation because a human has looked directly into that. Else, we are going to use the risk. And if we do not have a evaluation or a risk, we are going to use the prediction. So those are the bases for the flags, and also we have here all the features that has been used for flagging the user, like for example, metrics about the GitHub, and I mean, also quantities. Actually, they are not features, they are actually just summary statistics. So yeah, that's the results file. Uh, by the way, any, any questions so far? So those, those values in USDT on the other side, those are related to the donations that these individuals have made to the grants round, is that correct? So those are statistics for the user. Uh, you get the okay. contributions that the user did during the ground, during the round, and you get some statistics. Like for example, if you take it, all the contributions in that round as denominated in USDT, what's the medium okay. and what's the standard deviation? Okay. Uh, notice that uh, uh, USDT is the reference asset. So in practice, uh, a lot of those contributions are in other units like DAI, Ethereum, GTC. Um, so, so yes, it, it, it was converted. It was, it was using whatever the exchange rate was on the moment of the contribution. Mm -hmm. Okay, that will make sense. And those are all summary statistics. It's just so that, let's say, we can uh, take some summary statistics afterwards. 
so yeah, we have this data set. Uh, the second data set, this is a bit more complicated because it is a HDF uh, data set. But uh, from this home data, we can get a very granular uh, information about the contributions themselves. Like, for example, when the contribution was created, what's the profit of the contribution, and what's the wallet, and I mean, it's a very granular information. And this is the reason of why we must uh, leave that on the private data, because I mean, this can be really doxing. Uh, the notebooks, they are okay to be public as long we do not give you, I, I, mean, I mean, as long we do not give you the granular info, it's okay. So keep in mind that it's a good idea to, let's say, if you are going to explore the data when committing, uh, make sure that, let's say, to do not expose too much granular info. Just one or two rounds is okay, but okay, but yeah, I think you got the idea. Yeah. The third step yeah. here is loading the human flag. So it's a JSON file here. There is some data wrangling code. Uh, I always keep the specifics here. So I mean, if you needed, we could do a separate breakout session in order to explain. But the main output is that. The main output is that we have a multi-index. It's three index. One is um, Actually, this one doesn't matter. At least just two index. It's the evaluator and handle. So each hole, you have a pair of evaluator and user handle, and you have the answers of the evaluator about, for example, if a given user is CB or not, what's the confidence level, some notes, and so on. So this allows us to get some statistics about the human evaluation itself. And go over, going over the analysis here, so the first analysis that we do here is about CPU instance. Uh, I'm not going to go over too much about uh, what this means, but the main idea here is that essentially I take this human flags DF here, and I want to estimate, let's say, based on the human evaluations, what's the incidence of the CPU users given, given let's say, each consecutive round, evaluation round. So what did happen here is that, for example, uh, on JR12, there was five human evaluation rounds, and I did compute the estimated incidence on each round. So the first evaluation round had 20%, the second one had 16%, the third one had 15%, and so on. So this is very useful because uh, we do... I wouldn't say that it's very trivial that iPods, but I mean, one hypothesis that we can have is that... I mean, we can suppose that the CPU incidence across the round is somewhat stable. So if the evaluators are consistent, then this instance should be sort of, let's say, on the same order of magnitude through the round. So it would be very weird, for example, if for some reason, instead of, I mean, having 60% 60, uh, 60 attend, you had, for example, 40%. So this is more of a, let's say, an interesting metric to have, which is time consistency of the human evaluations. And also, I use uh, confidence intervals here for ca computing estimated CV instance across the round. So the estimate is 16.4%, with a margin of error of about 2%. The way of, let's say, parsing that is, uh, imagine that a human evaluation is a survey. Uh, it's just like a pool, like a presidential pool. You get a lot of people and ask, for example, oh, do you think that this guy is CB or not? Yes or not? And you apply user statistical techniques. And by the way, any questions uh, about that or? Uh, mm, no, what not we can also do a breakout session for, let's say, going to things deep. I'm just trying to pass the overview, so I mean. Yeah, no, that's that's great. I've I've got the code open on a separate window up here, so I'm just reading at the same time and trying to just yeah, uh, yeah cross cross correlate between the two. Yes. But no 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 immediate questions. Okay. So after the, we estimate the CBU instance, and this is interesting because the CBU instance is going to be a benchmark for uh, the, let's say, for the entire process performance, uh, we can start getting other things. So, I mean, here, for example, we do some exploratory that analysis about, for example, what's the relative distributions of these scores. So keep in mind that this is GR12. We didn't go over uh, 13 yet. But for example, you can see that aggregate score is either zero or one, the prediction score, you have a continuum because the machine learning, I mean, we are using a regressor. 
So that's one of the key things, because when you use a classifier, your user usually you take a cut at a 50%. But given that on Gitcoin, we don't need, we don't want necessarily to maximize accuracy. We may, for example, we may be willing to sacrifice accuracy so that we make sure that people do not get wrongly flagged. What happens in practice is that uh, when computing this aggregate score, we take a cut at the prediction score, which is above 50%, like, for example, 80% 80 or 70%. And actually, let me open here another document, which is the Jordan in HackMD. So let me see if I have here. So. Yeah, let me just open that. So. Yeah, so maybe this is helpful because the, usually when we present the results, and by the way, the, the whole of this notebook is really to generate numbers so that we can have things to show here. Usually we report in this format here, like for example, uh, we do a summary about the main highlights. Oops, it was a problem. And, and yeah, you can see for example the algorithm aggressiveness here. This is related to that, uh, Okay, so now it's recording. So Joseph, uh, the main idea here is that uh, I'm going through the entire analysis flow for doing the final report for JR13. So essentially, we do have a heap with notebooks and so on. They are for JR12. What we are going to do is really go through the entire flow of, let's say, uh, going to the cloud storage bucket, get the data, prepare the data, we are going to copy the notebook and create a new one, and I mean, uh, refactor things so that it uses the latest data. And we are also going to create a document uh, summarizing the findings. So the flow is sort of done. We are essentially just going to replicate what, what was already done for 12 and, and 11. Mm -hmm. And one thing to keep in mind is that, let's say, this is a base analysis, but depending on how the, you can, for example, introduce some innovations, depending on, for example, questions that can come along and so on. So it's really an iterative process. But, uh, but let's say, for just the report, I think that this base analysis is going to be fine. So first thing, uh, I did send a UI invite to the civil detection reports uh, repo on the fraud detection group. Uh, did you have a chance to accept that, accept it? Yeah, yeah, um, I've got that open now. So I'm looking at that right now. Yeah, good. So what I'm going to do then, uh, I'm going to share my screen so that you can see the heap on my side because there is a folder called private data. Because what happens is that, I mean, some of the, let me just update the right window here. Because what happens is that some of the data that we use for getting to summary statistics, they are quite sensitive. So mm -hmm. we must always be a bit careful with that. So yeah, I'm sharing my whole screen here. So yeah. So let me zoom in 